This week in Jamaica now, shocking how a JLP politician was shot dead in broad daylight in heavy traffic. Freed, four of the 33 defendants in the Klansman One Don trial have been found not guilty. In the lion's mouth, a zoo is under scrutiny over taunting actions of bitten tour guide. And on their own, NCB customers hit by fraud attacks will have to recover their millions by themselves. I'm Jovan Johnson and this is Jamaica Now. The shock daylight murder of Jamaica Labour Party councillor caretaker Lennox Hines is still reverberating across the country. Mr. Hines was shot dead at a stoplight on Marcus Garvey Drive in St. Andrew. A female companion was injured while his daughter escaped unhurt. Mr. Hines was the JLP's representative in the South Borough Division in Portmore St. Catherine. There's still no motive for the killing. Head of the St. Andrew South Police Division, Senior Superintendent Kirk Ricketts, says Mr. Hines appeared to have been targeted. It's reported that he was driving his white Honda CRV when the men rode up and opened fire. In 2013, Mr. Hines was freed of a murder charge arising from the 2007 killing of Ora Livermore, a resident of Portsmouth in St. Catherine. The Klansman Wan Don Gang trial saw a dramatic turn of events this week after four of the 33 defendants on trial were freed because the prosecution did not have enough evidence against them. Damien Elliston, Roshane Williams, Rivaldo Hilton and Owen Ormsby were found not guilty by Chief Justice Brian Sykes. The Gleaners' Tanisha Mondel has been covering the long-running trial and joins me now with the latest. Tanisha, what is to happen next with the 29 remaining defendants? So the lawyers for the 29 defendants have already started there are no case submissions before Chief Justice Brian Sykes. So far, 13 defendants' lawyers have presented their arguments. And on Monday, the others will resume. Okay, and what were some of the arguments raised by the lawyers? So far, the lawyers have argued that the prosecution has failed to prove that a criminal entity actually existed using elements under the anti-gang legislation. The lawyers have also argued that the prosecution has failed to put forward sufficient evidence to prove that the defendants were in fact members of the Klangsman Wandan Gang. So far, most of the lawyers who have made their submissions have asked Chief Justice Brian Sykes to discontinue the entire case against their clients, at least 12 of them. However, the alleged gang leader, Andre Blackman Bryan, his lawyer, Mr. Lloyd McFarlane, only contested one count on the 25 count indictment. Initially, he had five counts, but four of those counts were conceded by the prosecution. The one count which he took issue with pertains to a murder, and Mr. McFarlane is contending that the prosecution failed to establish that his client is guilty for that murder because they have not established that the person had died. So he's arguing that the court does not know if that person existed or if he's really dead. Thank you so much, Tanisha Mundell, who's been covering the Klansman Wan Don Gang trial for the Gleaner. <laughs> Jamaica's regulatory systems are under public scrutiny over a viral video showing an employee's finger being bitten by a lion at the Jamaica Zoo in Lacovia, St. Elizabeth. The video emerged on social media on May 21, and within the next three days, it was discovered that the entity does not have a license to operate as an attraction. The tourism product development company TP Deco says for years it had been trying to get the zoo to be compliant. The National Environment and Planning Agency, which gives permits for operation as a zoo and the importation of animals, says the zoo was also in breach of undisclosed aspects of the permits. In the video that recorded over 4 million views, the employee was seen taunting the animal before he was eventually bitten. Jamaica Zoo says the man suffered minor injuries and that it takes animal welfare seriously. A curfew is now in effect in the Mount Salem zone of special operations in St. James following an upsurge of gang violence that this week claimed three lives at a birthday party. Two persons are nursing injuries. 27-year-old Chadwell Fraser, otherwise called Bomb Brain or Chad, 24-year-old Chamario Chippick Calvin and 26-year-old Tonian Two Fly Reed were shot dead at the party in Rose Heights. Ground Commander for the Zoso, Deputy Superintendent of Police Ainsley McCarty, said residents will be allowed to attend church services, work and do other chores, but are reminded to walk with a form of photo identification. Mr. McCarty said no parties, wake or other public gatherings apart from the church services will be entertained during the curfew. 
<laughs> the Northern Caribbean University, NCU, says the arrest of one of its lecturers for alleged sex crimes and other offenses is unfortunate. Dr. Russell McLean, a lecturer in the College of Humanities, Behavioral and Social Sciences, was arrested last week. Jamaican authorities disclosed in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Tuesday that Dr. McLean is wanted in Florida in the United States for alleged offenses that date back to 1997. Dr. McLean waived his right to an extradition hearing and agreed to go to the U.S. to face charges of armed sexual battery, armed burglary of a dwelling, armed kidnapping, burglary, possession of burglary tools, and resisting law enforcement with violence. NCU says at the time of Dr. McLean's employment, approximately 20 years ago, the normal background checks were done and nothing damaging was uncovered. Investigations into the allegations against Dr. McLean went cold for 13 years before detectives got a breakthrough from DNA tests conducted in 2010. The results linked him to other criminal offences, prompting investigators to reopen the case. Jamaica marked National Labour Day on Monday, May 23, with a variety of projects across the island. The national project was the renovation of the Mandela Park in Halfway Tree, St. Andrew, that was named in honour of South Africa's anti-apartheid hero, the late Nelson Mandela. Prime Minister Andrew Holness signalled that the park will be moved to a more suitable location. Meanwhile, in St. Catherine, tensions were a bit high after North East St. Catherine Member of Parliament, the Jamaica Labour Party's Carencia Morrison, got upset that she was not informed about a project at the Natural Bridge attraction in her constituency. She had a few words for the Spanish Town Mayor, the People's National Party's Norman Scott. It would have been nice to have formally extended an invitation to the Member of Parliament, but he might have been remiss, and for whatever the reason he is here, I welcome him to Northeast and St. Catherine, where I will remain as Member of Parliament, and of course where my team is out ready to assist him with the said project. I also want to add that I'm very impressed that His Worship yes. has selected a project in Northeast and St. Catherine instead of focusing on the much needed rehabilitation of the town capital, Spanish town, over which he presides. There are issues in Spanish town such as drain cleaning, road rehabilitation, the infestation of rats. Those are issues that the mayor could apply himself to, but I'm very impressed that he has considered St. Catherine Northeastern as priority instead of those issues. The 12 National Commercial Bank NCB customers who lost approximately $18 million in a cyber fraud attack will be on their own to recover their money. NCB's manager of special investigations in the Fraud Prevention Unit, Dane Nicholson, says customers unwittingly volunteered their information through fraudulent text messages and telephone calls. But he says the internal systems of the country's largest commercial bank are safe. He's urging customers to ignore links they receive via text or email disguised as the NCBs, asking them for personal information. We have seen where fraudsters call customers pretending to be Dan Nicholson, asking customers to verify a suspicious transaction and then for the customers to provide their token code in order to stop the fraud. Remember now guys, NCB have a no click, no link policy. Once you receive an SMS message, purporting to be coming from NCB and it asks you to click on the link, stop and think it's fraud. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, turn on your notification and subscribe today. I'm Jovan Johnson and before we go, Let's hear from Jamaica College's wonder boy, Javon Blake. I love track. I know I didn't start it initially. I came to JC and I started in the eighth grade. And I was forced at first, but I think I grew to love it. And I really cannot picture myself um, not doing track. Um, it, it has helped me in so many ways, not just getting a scholarship to an Ivy League, but I think it helped me to come out of my shell. It made me a lot more confident. It made me a lot more focused. It, it made me... You know, it gave me exposure, and I really just cannot see myself getting up one day saying, I don't want to do this anymore, given I am healthy and stable. I wasn't going to let my academics suffer, but at the same time, I was not going to come in track with, you know, all these expectations put on me, and what my coach was feeding me, you know, you're, you're doing this well, you can do this well. I was not going to let that down either, so there are times I had to to be a student 
I need to be an athlete. Okay. I, I did not forget that I was either. Thank you.